Hello, welcome to the corporation world. I'm afraid the developers let in a lot of weird bugs that basically break the game in ways that you like. I think most of these bugs will be fixed over time, but in the meantime, just enjoy them as much as you can. Now, what is the big deal about the game? Yeah, you may say it's the ship upgrades. No, yes and no, it's that, but there are a lot of other things tied to this as well. So this will just be a guide, 10 tips and tricks, and also we'll go over all of the major components, but we'll do it in a in a very short amount of time, so that means I'll skip a lot of information and I'll have to do multiple videos to explain most of the systems while I also advance further into the game. So, what is the major and the most important thing about the game? Tip number one, how to find the most important items? Well, that's pretty easy. Go to stock exchange, search for the item you're looking for. For example, it can be this thing over here, the quasi-morphic data. Well, no, let's search for the welding machines in the beginning. As you can see, you only have one manufacturer on Phobos. The other ones will also use it. So, the highest amount of chances to find something will be on the station that it actually manufactures it. Now, there is a trick. You cannot really get a mission on a station. Because, for example, you have to go to Mars. You have to trigger a mission on this station over here. And that can be quite hard to do because you have to, first of all, be there. Secondly, have a mission. Thirdly... You should be able to win the mission or at least uh, not get a lot of negative reputation in the faction you want to help. So it's quite tricky as well. But from what I can see, a lot of the things that are produced and that are very, very rare will be on Mars. Or near Mars. Like Phobos and Deimos, as you can see, this is one of the most important things as well. As you can see, it will be produced in Phobos and Deimos and yeah... Another big location will be Venus and of course Mercury. Why am I telling you this? Well, the up new upgrade system needs a lot of very, very rare materials and I really mean it. They are super rare to get. Some of them will be so rare that you'll only see them after 10 or 15 hours. But again, it just depends on how fast you can play. So I basically recommend you keep all of the important materials. As you can see, you have some crates over here. It doesn't matter, you need to keep all of them, the chips. The stations are very important right now, even some of the ones you didn't think about, like the clothes stack. I think that's laboratory clothes. So yeah, just look through all of the items and kind of make a mental image of them. But to be honest, I think you should... This is tip number two. I think you should just store the more important ones. So try to get a go for it, I don't know. Try to get a feeling for it that you'll have basic resources, the ones you already know. And then you'll have advanced resources that you can either use or trade for later. So, for example, the data miner, this will be very important resources that you can either trade or use later. Now, there are some, some of them will be for straight up upgrades, but some of them you can actually disassemble to get the items you need. But I'm not going to this because some of them will disassemble into really cool stuff. For example, game over here. I don't think you need many of them. Maybe you need a few to upgrade something, but it will disassemble into the capacitor, which is a major item for crafting, upgrading and some other stuff. So try to disassemble, let's say one, and see what in what it disassembles. So that will be trans uh, that will be in a transformer, lens, and some other stuff. So even though some things will seem like they're not important, they are super super important. So kind of make a mental image of the basic ones. What what are you doing there? That used for crafting mostly and the basic ones, you know, and the other ones that can either be used to upgrade stuff or disassemble. Into something super super nice. The lollipops are for trading. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Also, I don't recommend you use anything from these piles over here. I just recommend you store them until you need them. So, yeah. Some of them might actually assemble into some of the more important stuff. So, be careful what you auto disassemble in the game. That's super super important. Now, team number two. Uh, the most important thing in the game, in the beginning of the game, is to just go to Mars and make a lot of missions. Now, if you don't have the missions, try to do all of the missions for the top three corporations. So, real war has been an Ancom. The other factions, forget about them. There's no corporation war anymore. You just have to help the top three corporations rise to power as fast as they can. Because even if you help the other ones, they're not growing technology fast enough for you to unlock the stuff you need. Sadly, the way the game works right now is you can get the chips to create stuff very, very easy, so you don't need to barter or trade or do missions for the other corporations. So, for example, let's say for French Comte, right? 
They can give you this, uh, this very very important kits over here, but it's not worth it because Realware will actually give you all of the chips you need pretty fast. You have the basic items, the common items. This is also very badly worded. This is a basic item chip. This is this is an advanced item chip, and then we'll have the high end chip. We'll have some of the more important resources. So basically, this is basic stuff. This is advanced stuff, and this will be high tech stuff, uh, high end stuff, end game stuff like this armor over here that we see. Very cool helmet. I like that a lot. So it doesn't matter what the other factions have because you can just get the chips for them. Of course it will be a little harder, but it doesn't matter. So I recommend you just go on Mars to all of the missions you can against all of the factions except for the top three corporations. Now, why is that? Well, there is also another thing over here on the ship that is pretty easy to upgrade. I cannot see the item that I needed, but it's pretty easy to upgrade which will generate missions. So you can get up to three missions or I think in the beginning you only get one, but as you upgraded more can get more missions and it will also reload faster plus you get more reputation points for those particular missions the yeah, number of charges also you can get increased reward points i don't think it's 20 i'm not sure how this works but you get more than 20 reward points that's for sure faster reload and then also get a scanner super super important as you can see i'm just missing one of those ai chips maybe i can disassemble something from my bay and just make it i'll have to experiment with that a little later well, I guess we can take a look. I don't think it will be the research station or those because those are super rare. I think it's going to be one of these things. It's going to be microchip and lens. Okay, so maybe not that. Geographic scanner. I'm so afraid to disassemble one. Okay, so that's just normal stuff here. Yeah. I'm afraid to disassemble something that I might need later. Management unit. Probably is nothing, so eh. Nothing that important, the quasi-morphic scanner. And more lenses and transformers, which are also super important items. So try to see if you want to keep them or disassemble them. If you have, let's say, three or four or five items of one of a kind, you can also disassemble them. I don't think you don't need the electronic parts, you can just disassemble them. But as you can see, there's not that much nice stuff to be there. Toolbox, I guess you can also assemble one of these so you can see what it is. Yeah. It was just junk. So even though some of this will be junk, some of them will be super super important. Also, I was keeping all of the alcohol packages and some of the other stuff. Just wondering why. This is the main way you'll actually be getting items that will help you reduce the quasimor forces. You get the idea. This is how you're supposed to be doing it. But it's a long, long time until you learn all of the good items. Also, the ledges are not supposed to be here, but I just put them over here because they're eh. I guess you can just look at the item and see how much it, it's worth. If it's worth something about 50, then it's super important and you should keep it over here. Yeah, about 50, it's a good price because as you can see, this is all basically 1 up to 10 max. <laughs> That's 1. So yeah, anything above 50 is worth keeping and you can see how it works a bit later or you can trade it for other stuff a bit later. Now, what is another important thing? So like I said, you are supposed to go on Mars or the other two locations and just create missions over there and work for the top three corporations as fast as you can so they can get technology up as fast as they can. Oh, that's a new weapon. I like how it looks. And also to get the item chips, the, you'll get you'll be getting so many production chips you don't you'll not really be I mean what can you do with them? You'll not know what to do with them and you'll keep most of them anyway. By the way, they have some interesting guns that I really want to unlock. Like what is this? What is this? is this anyway let's get back on the game so that's what you should be doing and then you should be upgrading as fast as possible so now let's get into the ship upgrades themselves what they what do they do uh, this is very exp very well explained it creates a mission but you can also get a mission with additional bonuses to it so it's super important to upgrade that and then you can scan the first floor of uh, a level which is super super important. It's massive. It's a massive difference that you are able to go and just complete the mission much faster. I think you can complete the missions in about 5 to 10 minutes if you use all of your available data. You can also get less enemies per mission and you can also get more item level per mission. Which is amazing. Okay, so as you can see, you, should, you shouldn't disassemble any of the crates. Look at that. <clears throat> I need one for that. 
But not only that, you can also get them a little higher level where we definitely don't disassemble that. You can also get the mission map even for a lower floor and you can also get even more items. I think this is just points. Yeah. Okay. So less enemies, more loot and better loot and you can also see all of the map. Unless they have a jammer. I think if they have a jammer it will not work. So also the management over here is not introduced yet but... It's a massive upgrade. This is this should be one of the first things you try to do. But again, the materials you get will be random, so don't stress too much about it if you don't get them. Extremely important up, upgrade. I think the most important thing is over here, the weaponry, the gunsmith. This is bug currently. The developers made a few mistakes on how the weapons and armors upgra are upgraded. I definitely unlock it and Instead you'll just get more prods, more projects and less project time as you go over here. The more important one will be changing stats plus one. So for example if you change the stats to be higher damage, you'll actually get one more point of damage over here. But this is pretty hard to get to as you can see. You'll need a lot of stuff but not that far away. Same for the armor. All of this stuff is not important. The most important one is the first one and the last one over here. We still don't have the augmentics. I'll show you how the... Mission scanner works, it just adds a mission on your current location, but let's see how the weapon works. Now, like I keep saying, it's bugged beyond belief. I think the developers made a huge mistake, so in order to understand what the developers did wrong, I'll show you how to upgrade an armor. Now, keep in mind that upgrading an armor is also based on the quality of the armor, so this is a basic item. Consider the basic item. The frame is considered an, an advanced item, so as you can see it will need much better materials and it also will need chips when you upgrade it. So what is the deal? Well, the deal is that, for example, the Glory. The Glory is a very good starting armor because it has resistance against physical damage, fire and cold, which is basically all of the dangers you'll encounter. So I recommend you upgrade it something like this. I'm not sure if the bonuses apply re retroactively, so you probably want to save some upgrades, I don't know, the developers will say they'll, they will let you reset your research at some point, but for now, with 5 basic item chips and 20 armor plates, you can basically get an armor that has 10 on each, and this is only for the chest slot, so it's amazing, but, as you can see, you can only upgrade it to level 3, and then you need a basic item chip. I think what the developers horribly mistaken, is that these things don't need chips for the item upgrade. You may think, well, that's does require a chip and gunsmith box. Yes, but this is a this is a, an advanced item. You know what the basic weapon is? Well, let's not say the hunter. Let's just say the the liberator. Yeah, the liberator. So as you can see, if you upgrade this, it doesn't need the chip. So I think this should also need the chip starting from level four. Which would definitely stop you upgrading, but I think you need a lot more than that. Only at level 18 do you need a chip, or 19 I guess. And after that you still only need one chip, so... You can upgrade a basic weapon until level 26 without many problems. So, try to stockpile on the weapon parts and the spring. The springs are also pretty hard to get, but if you just disassemble everything, you'll get them in no time. So, super important tip over here. I lost track of them, but believe me, it will be at least 10, but probably more than 10. So, if you're going to play with a pistol, do this. Now, what, what was my personal choice? My personal choice was the GIF hammer. Now, don't be too alarmed. This is, I think, damage per shot, but the thing fires four shots. So, it's actually going to be a lot less damage than, than it shows here because not all of the pellets will hit an enemy. Yeah, it depends on a lot of things, but I really recommend you keep searching for the basic chips until you find the GIF hammer and upgrade the GIF hammer as much as you can. Level 21 is a nice one because. You still need a lot of springs, which are not so easy to find. Don't upgrade the ammo, because a single upgrade will raise the cost of everything. So just upgrade the damage. Again, I think the developers made some big mistakes over here as well, because I think any upgrade done to damage should be twice as expensive as an upgrade done to anything else. I also increase its accuracy, but it's not worth it. Currently, it's only worth it to upgrade the damage, because you don't have any problems with accuracy. So I showed you kind of like what weapon, what armors to upgrade. I mean, you can even upgrade the balaclava in my opinion because it's so it's dirt cheap at level 80 to require a chip but you can just upgrade a few things here and there because the helmets are also pretty hard to find well i guess until you find some better stuff this will have to be enough 
You see, some of the things will be more or less the same. What is not really worth upgrading right now is the Impactor set. Because it resists poison and beams. So yeah, the glory is the way to go. If you can find a lot of items from the glory set, that's amazing. As for the weapons, I would recommend the Jeff Hammer, but otherwise just go for the Silent Eagle. Because this one is super easy to upgrade as well, I mean... I said you can go up to level 18 without many problems and this has enough damage like a heavy weapon like a super strong gun yeah so we've talked about navigation engineering oh research the class as well this is where the developers also made a few mistakes they have made a lot of very strong classes now in order to work on the classes you need to have the class unlocked which will take a, quite a bit of time but what this essentially lets you do is Change all of the skills of a single uh, class. Again, you will need uh, to research more upgrades in order to do that very efficiently. Like having more projects, number of perks, number of projects, you get the idea. You can see this is also not fully implemented either. But basically, if you like the, you know, the everyone's favorite, the Tunnel Rat, for example, if you like to be a melee character, you can just Put the perk over here. Let me see what will be a good one. So you can just do it like this. It's actually very, very easy to replace it. So if you have the tunnel right and if you want to play as a melee character. Yeah, just put it over here. As you can see, it's super easy to do, but you need an AI module. So I recommend you don't do much of this until you get your basic upgrades for the ship ready. So in the beginning of the game you'll still play with the tunnel rat, but just know that it doesn't matter that much since you can basically swap up the few skills onto every class and that will make it so much stronger and so much more interesting to fit your playstyle. So yeah, you'll not really use this a lot, but you can also just go over here and change this to give the character more dodge or anything that you like. I want to try and see if I give it battery damage, which it's I think it's just energy damage, and see if it, if an energy shotgun comes as a shotgun as an and as an energy. That would be very interesting. Another thing I would like to give the, this class, I'm just showing you what I what my rationale was, is combat reflexes because it's a basic, it's a passive perk and it will give you a lot of dodge. And this is the last one I would replace with. Uh, I guess it depends on a lot of things, but I'll just I want to replace it with ritualism. Well, not maybe not ritualism, maybe something else because this requires you to eat vac, which will allow you to kind of have your allies, so some of the enemies will join you. War crime seems like it's a nice uh, idea as well, but you probably want to go for another passive perk, so it will either be something arsonist over here, so you'll have a higher chance of burning because you know how damage works right now. Damage only blocks 90% of damage, even if the enemy has, let's say, 1 million armor, you fire something at the enemy, it will still deal 10 damage. So that 10 damage can still cause a wound and can still burn a lot of time and can do a lot of other stuff as well. I'll have to look at this more, but yeah, shotgun that has a chance to burn everyone, it will be much more interesting, but it can also burn you as well. So yeah, that can be a bit of a problem. Probably you'll want a passive perk as well. Probably it will be aggressive, if I'm completely honest. I think it might just be accuracy for this one over here or minus to scatter because you still want to put that long range of course you also have the other options of just you know the clips blades over here which will which you can use sprint and dodge red damage and stuff and just replace it with the perk that you with the marauder so that will be a massive boost for you now, what is the next upgrade? The next upgrade is super important over here, the hangar. Now, this should be one of the first things you try to upgrade as well, because you can get so much out of it. The capsule. The capsule basically is a two-slot ship that you can activate and call during a mission. I recommend you call it during the second floor, because it has a chance to appear anywhere, in, and it might block your pathway, but I, th I think they'll fix those problems along the way. Just go for the upgrades. As you can see, two slots. You can recharge it, I think never really tried this, but you can probably call it multiple times in a mission, or I'm not sure what this means. More slots, even more slots over there, and as you can see, we have more transformers that you can play with. This is a very interesting item, it's a grenade. Then... 
capsule and this is the shuttle the shuttle also have its own inventory now you can put stuff in your shuttle I guess I just need one more of those and I can also make the trader this was also going to be very very important but just try to get the capsule as much as you can and then the shuttle which will allow you to basically loot all of the initial areas of the first floor go back to the shuttle put all of the items there go to the second floor loot go to the first floor call the capsule and then the final floor you'll basically not really even need the buffalo anymore but still the buffalo would be a very nice item to get as it is right now so yeah very important to have now the genome the genome is basically like the upgrades to the guns or to the armor except it works for your clone now it's the same thing as the other upgrades as you can see project time number of projects and so on this thing over tra here training will allow you to train clones I'm not sure how this works but for example if you're in a mission with Percy you can just put some random clone to train like I don't know the guy with the dodge or I forgot what the clone names are but yeah someone can train while you're doing missions and doing other stuff so what essentially this does you can train everyone at the same time so you can just switch clones here and there without any problems now this is one thing that is super super important it gives the operative ranks that would give you bonuses what does that mean well the rank is if i can show you over here Parsitan or that. the rank is rookie experience capacitor for rank increase so i'm not sure what those will give you but it will just be another way to make your character stronger i think the character will be also a lot stronger like that So yeah, I recommend you follow this pathway as fast as you can as well, but that's for the thermal containers. And then, it will also reduce the number of kills you need to upgrade to, to the, the next rank. You can also have more rank limits, which will essentially make your character so strong that you will not even think you're playing the same game. Now, another very really important thing over here is supply, and this is how the new conveyor belts work. As you can see, they are pretty hard to unlock, so yeah, good luck unlocking the projects. Also, assembly time is very important, but you really want to go over here to scavenger, so kind of ignore certain pathways. You can see the game kind of tries to trick you. So just go for the next upgrade, the scavengers. The scavengers will be giving you a lot of items from the mission itself. So if you cannot take everything with you in the capsule, in the ship, in the inventory, just don't worry. The scavengers will bring a lot of the stuff back. But of course, they'll probably miss 20-25% of the items, so they'll not bring everything back. But you can also increase that as well. So they can bring more stuff back. Metal detectors and so on. And then recycling. What is recycling? Well, recycling basically lets you recycle stuff with a better chance. I'm not sure if you can recycle, for example, a crate to give you the max amount of loot. Because this is also a bit randomized. So sometimes you can get more items or better items. But with the recycling unlocked, you'll actually be able to get the max out of it. Especially because, look at this also upgrade it to give you more resources more resources and extra resources so i'm not sure what this means but from what i understand from what it's written over here you will disassemble items for extra items and for better items yeah if that makes sense so i try to unlock scavengers as fast as you can so now you know what to focus on and as you can see the game really changed a lot so yeah i don't know what to say also another very important thing is that I showed you this over here to see where you can find, let's say, specific items. Uh, another important thing is that you can basically look at how much an item will cost. And this is one of the things that developers did to nerf the game. So, as you can see, you need a lot of points. So, how do you get points? Well, not just by trading items, but also doing missions for that particular uh, faction. And I think you store some of the rewards. And sometimes, let's say over here. Anyway. The idea is that when you are trading with someone, even though you don't put anything over here, you might see 1000 to 1300 points over here. So it's for it's from doing missions for them. Since you don't get a lot of items from the mission reward itself. So what's the catch? Well, the catch is that most of these items are uh, you are basically not going to get through normal trading. What do you look at that? The buffalo backpack is 1500 points. While the item chips, the basic ones are 100, the advanced ones are 200, and this would be 500 and 400. And as you can see, even the simple vest would be 1000, so you don't have as many chances of getting free equipment as you had before. You're just going to have to trade a lot of items very, very fast. So they have 
an economy system. I'm not sure how it works, as you can see. I don't know how it works, don't care. Zero, 14, 5,000. Something related to their production, so they will produce stuff and they will sell stuff. I'm not sure how much it affects the faction, I'm not sure how that works. So, okay, what is the big deal then? Well, the big deal is that sometimes these factions will have uh, limited trades. Most of the times you'll see that a uh, station will sell the same stuff for, let's just say the, the station will be able to trade you stuff that you see over here, but sometimes they'll change this. So this is actually a variable interface. Even though all of the items seems like they are the same, sometimes you'll get other trading items. So for example, yeah, look at this, the morphine. The morphine is 200 points. So I recommend you stock up on, you stock up on free items basically. The, more imp the most important thing to stock up right now is the helper, the servo backpack, because it gives you 500 points in a trade always. But of course, it's hard to find those locations that give you the, the trade. Uh, the morphine, but that means you'll have to use a lot of whiskey and stuff. But I showed you, you can just stock all the crates and use some of them anyway. We'll not get into that. And another item that I saw that is kind of requested is the rocket lollipop. I don't know why. It's just like that. So how do you do this? Well, you simply go to... You go from Mercury to Venus as often as you can. Because this is kind of like a good trading route with more... It's easier in the beginning of the game when all of the factions have a settlement or a location over there. And once you arrive to a location, just check, let's say, a real where and the faction you want to trade with. And they might have the Morphine or the Servo Helper backpack. Oh yeah, over here, see? So this is a temporary trade, so when you arrive at that citadel, it might not even be there. From what I can see, it can change between one day and another day, so you just have to go back and forth until you have, let's say, the trade over here, and then don't bother doing this unless you have about 5,000 points. In my other video, I showed how I traded about 10,000 points. So it's a temporary trade, go from Mercury to Venus until you see a faction or a location that has the trade and then go over there and trade it. But again, it might even last less than a day, so sometimes it will disappear when you arrive there. So from what I can see, the backpacks will, the servo helpers will always be 500, the morphine will always be 200. And the other items can vary a lot. Don't sell the chips, don't sell the upgrade items, that's the worst mistake you can make in the game. Don't sell any of the stuff that is shown over here, for example. You can probably trade the chemical processors, the thing with the holes in it. For 400, but you probably just have to make a spreadsheet or just write it down on a piece of paper the items you need to fully upgrade stuff. And once you fully upgrade the, the items, fully upgrade the stuff on your ship, just start selling or disassembling them. It's going to be a very easy and fun game like this. Anyway, that's basically all you need to know about the upgrade system and the other stuff and other tips. Bye bye.